I love what I do. I really love music more than me. Honest and vulnerable and extremely inspiring. I'm not here to promote myself. I'm just here to have a conversation with you. His love for Louis Vega, his relationship with Carl Cox. You know that you have a lot of capacities and you look at the others and you start to say, yeah, I can do the same, but you don't have to do what other does. Moments in music. Hey guys, welcome to Moments in Music, a new podcast from Defected, hosted by myself, Monkey. This week, we have one of the world's most in-demand DJs on the show. It is Mr. Joseph Capriati. Hi. Ciao. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Um, it's lovely to have you on. We've never actually met in person before, so uh, this is um, quite an intense first meeting. Yes, I'm very nervous. I, I, nervous. Got, I got the uh, <laughs> defected uh, headquarter and I was like, okay, wow, you know, it's uh, it's emotional for me to be here. Yeah. Also, I'm alone today. Nobody from my team, um, you know, came. I said, I want to go alone. You know, I said, I wanted to, to go to see uh, how is the feeling to mm. go in the defected headquarter. And um, it's incredible. Yeah, you've come with no entourage, you've come on your own. And you said when you walked in here, you felt something. What, what does this place mean to you? Sorry? What does this place mean to you, Defected? Yeah, it means me definitely all my beginnings in the music, you know, because house music is where I come from. Mm. This is how my career started. And I was 11 years old. I started to listen house music. Mm. And uh, from then... Then 16, I discovered techno and production. Then at 18, I started to travel. I did my first record, I was 17. And then step by step traveling, I start to put again my house roots in my DJ sets. Mm. Actually never left, but uh, there was a period that was very focused on techno. And uh, this is how people knows me about techno. But then uh, something happened in myself and I say, I need to share my house uh, soul mm. with people at all costs. <laughs> and this is something that at the beginning I had uh, a little dopes about because all the, my techno fans, especially the purist, mm. they were like, uh, you know, he sell out, you know, they, they, they didn't trust what I was doing, and it's totally understandable. Mm -hmm. I also maybe was not able to understand this before, but then I I saw Carl Cox playing personally mm. in first person, and I was like, okay, this is something that I can do, I wanna do it, I wanna try to, to get influenced by. Carl Cox is the person who really, mm. Uh, changed the vision of a DJ to me properly. Mm. I, I still remember uh, even when I was a, a teenager, I was also listening to DJs that were going from classic house to to techno, like Francois Kevorkian, for example, Danny Tenaya. Mm -hmm. But Carl Cox left me something more close to what is my vision, you know, of DJ. So something that I can really play a proper techno set mm -hmm. and I can play a proper house set or a tech house set. Mm -hmm. And then maybe sometimes a global set, which is more difficult. I mean, going from proper house to proper techno in a set, it's something that really deserves attention and uh, actually it's a lot of work behind it. Mm. But I, I, be I believe it's a gift. You cannot really play everything if you don't have a gift to know how to feel what you're doing. So it's something that comes from the heart, mm -hmm. I think. And um, yeah, so. When you're known for something so much so, like techno, for example, but you know within yourself you have so much more to give like your house roots. Right. It must be quite scary. It is, because you go out from your comfort zone mm. and this is something that I I know. 
but I do believe in what I do so much. It's a long-term story. I don't want to be part of the hype. I don't want to be part of the trend. Mm. I really want to make music. And this is something that happens into myself when a style become too trendy, automatically there is a, a side of mind that want to go to another direction. <laughs> You know, when I started to play techno all over the world, I really played almost everywhere I called play in the in terms of techno. And if I was continuing only in that way, maybe today when techno is so big, you know, mm -hmm. it's uh, maybe I could have changed from pure techno to maybe this new wave of techno. Maybe I would have been even you know, stronger mm. and uh, on the terms of hype, but I don't want it. Mm. I like to do what my hearts want. My heart say to me, go to play house, go to play tech house and go to play techno. When there is the time to really play techno and express myself as a techno artist, not just as a trend in terms of techno. Same with house. Mm -hmm. A tech house. I don't go to Ibiza to play tech house because uh, Ibiza is tech house. No, it's because I love to play groovy on the island. I like to feel the vibe mm -hmm. of the island and what the island means to me, you know. Mm. Uh, nowadays, the island, I have to say, it's even more global. There is more techno than before on the island, even in a hard techno side, which is growing on a way, but for me, Ibiza is gonna be always the island of the groove, mm. the island of the, of the vocals, of the house, you know, mm. this is something that will never change in myself. Yeah, and, and with this mindset of you being able to feel yourself through music rather than jumping on things that are, are popular, there's longevity in that. And there's con continuous learning. What is it about feeling the music that makes you almost walk away, not walk away, but want to do something different when something gets too popular? It's about, for me, I don't, I don't r really go away from what gets too popular. Mm. I mean, it's something that comes in myself and tells me about you should to try to push yourself yeah. on teach to the new generation what is the music you love and uh, what is needed at the moment to be teached to the to the kids mm -hmm. because nowadays if you see on social medias, on everywhere, on TikTok, on Instagram, on these reels, what is popular? So a lot of hard techno, uh, trancy, uh, and uh, kind of melodic house and mm. things like this, progressive house. I don't know how to, <laughs> to, to say uh, the name of these styles. But uh, I mean, nowadays, house music really can do the difference, the proper house music, mm -hmm. the classic house music, the one that really f make me fall in love with mm. this scene. And this is why I decided to get back in the studio and also produce mm. some house records, which are coming out. I have a, few, a release now on a, a very important label on house music, which is with uh, artists like Arnold Jervis. You know, mm. Arnold Jervis is one of the legendary mm, vocalists and singers of house music. Mm. And we did this project during the pandemic. So it's uh, something that people will not expect, but mm -hmm. I'm happy to share this. And I don't wanna be on, the, on doing music just for having a lot of plays or uh, being the chart. Mm -hmm. I want to make music because I love the vibration that what I'm doing is is good for me. So you never know. Maybe I'm doing something different at this moment, this special historical moment 
but maybe he's gonna leave something because mm-hmm. people doesn't expect from Joseph Capriari doing a vocal house single, yeah. not even an album that you you say, okay, I'm putting a house track on a track list. No, this is a single. So mm. it's a single plus a dub version plus a cappella. So like really like old school yeah. uh, way on vinyl, you know? So it's let's see, let's see. This is what is music for me. Yeah. yeah. It's nice to hear that from somebody like you because I make music too, but I think I'm still learning. Um, I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> not, I'm nobody, yeah. really. I just try. Yeah. I try, but I'm nobody. I'm not a genius of productions. I'm not like, you know, an outstanding producer, but I try. And I, the only thing I'm sure about yeah. is the, the gift I have to transmit something to people. This is something that I'm sure about. Yeah. Because it's not possible to see myself doing what I do and still going strong. Yeah. Because I had I passed the three generations already. Because you know, let's say generation change every five years, four, five, six years, then people go to have families. They mm-hmm. change life. Mm-hmm. So I believe the age range of going to the clubs of normal people is about, I don't know, starting to get introduced into the dance music in uh, 14, 15, then, you know, you you go around 20, 21, you want to make family in the the most of the times, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's it. I believe I maybe changed already four, four generation in 20 years. And I still have that feeling with the crowd Mm. when I play and people that come to listen to me, they trust in what I'm doing. So I believe it's a gift. Mm. And uh, Mm -hmm. Carl Cox told me these words also, something that he he left to me. He told me like, Joseph, you have a gift. Don't go, don't rush, just wait take the long-term steps, you know, Mm. because I was confused for a period, which is understandable. Yeah. I was, this was the period when I wanted to put my house roots back and get into a new wave of of a career. And this is where Carl Cox was very helpful to Mm. me. He told me like, Joseph, just trust your, yourself, your instinct, do what you love. But most important thing, don't, try to get into the hype because hype finish. It took me five years. This is like <laughs> hype finish, five years. Yeah. But then if you work hard, heads down, in 20 years, you're gonna still be there. Mm-hmm. And this was already about 10 years ago. That so conversation? That conversation. That's crazy. So it's yeah. now still there. And, uh, and, and Carl Cox is obviously is an inspiration for you? It's a big inspiration, not only for me, but I mean for the world scene. Yeah, is a he, he has a gift. He's a gift mm-hmm. for the scene. You know, he's this kind of people that has a, a big aura. You know, I have a lot to learn from him every day. Um, I get emotional because he, in myself, there is a side that wants to be like Carl Cox, but. I cannot be like him because he has an aura. <laughs> yeah. This aura, I try to look for my peace inside. I like to to look for my, you know, feeling good with the world, with myself. But then this, it's my problem, my mind. Mm. I'm, I'm always thinking, always overthinking. Mm. That's my problem. But Carl teach me to really more believe in myself. But it's, it's hard sometimes, you know, yeah. it's hard. And you spoke about recently, um, I, I want to get onto at some point, the, the early house that you loved, but you spoke recently or just then about getting back into the studio. Yeah. And the process behind that. Talk us, talk us through that process. So it's something that um, is very, very deep for me because for me production is something super important. Like something that I really 
care a lot about. And in the last few years, I was not able anymore to to get into the studio. Mm. This happened in a special period of my life. Uh, something big, big family issue happened to me, which left me a big trauma. And uh, from that moment, I was not able to to get in the studio and produce. And uh, I started a lot of projects during the pandemic, which I never finished. I listened to that projects nowadays, and I feel they were like, there is something like really wow, mm. but needs to be done. So I was, after that family issue, I never stopped to look about uh, to find the happiness mm. and uh, I found it finally after uh, three long years mm -hmm. and uh, I I cannot feel more happy about what is happening to me right now because I'm I'm back in production officially I've been all uh, this week in London as well, working in the studio and it's getting very productive. Mm. A lot of uh, some really interesting, thing, interesting things are coming out. Mm. And I finally got again the confidence in myself and uh, not rushing to finish a project, but taking the time and like, do it. Like Carl said. Sorry? Like Carl Cox said. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> <Yeah>. exactly. <laughs> So this is something that it's a mind game. This is mm. what I told you before. Mind can make you really a lot of jokes. And uh, I finally get confident in myself, finally having a routine, a good routine, mm -hmm. which I believe is super important. I mean, I lost the routine for a long time. I was only playing around the world mm -hmm. and uh, getting on tour and I loved it. But when you travel a lot and you get, it, you get older, you get more tired. Yeah. So the recovery time is uh, longer after a weekend. When I was younger, yeah, I was a machine, you know, traveling, you know, having fun with friends, going back home, making beats, traveling again, sleeping 12 hours after <laughs> two days of partying and playing. And then again, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, are, you are energetic, mm -hmm. but impossible. After the 30s, especially if you play from long time like me, mm -hmm. it, was so, it was impossible. Yeah. Now I'm getting 37 this summer. And, uh, you know, after one year of uh, doing this life change, it's incredible. I mean, really took a long time, but uh, I feel even more proud of myself, what I've yeah. done. And uh, this is how the creativity also came back. Yeah, And it's very important also about staying good with your mind. I mean, I am, as I told you before, I'm very hyperactive. So I, I didn't have a good sleep, didn't have a, a talk with any psychotherapist before. Now, if I don't see my, my psychotherapist, I cannot, I cannot leave. Mm. It's a weekly appointment that I cannot miss. Mm -hmm. Everything of this work helps the creativity. Yeah. It's super important. I tell to all the producers and DJs out, it's very, very important the mind health. Mind health, it's something that I didn't even, uh, you know, care mm. of before and I didn't even realize how important it is because you, nev you, you never expect it's happening to me, you know, I say, oh, I'm not crazy. This is the answer. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's crazy here, but mind is a, uh, it's like an organ. It's the yeah. most powerful organ we have, and uh, we need to take care of it. Yeah. This is how longevity in music, especially if you do a career like I do, mm -hmm. playing every year like a uh, hundred gigs and more. Now I'm playing less because I did a choice, you know, between stay completely uh, always on the tour or staying between touring playing good sets every time, trying to, yeah. <laughs> and uh, having time to do edits, 
having time to go in the studio yeah. and having time to be a boyfriend, you know, a son, a brother. This is super important. Yeah. Well, firstly, I want to say congratulations on the sobriety. Thank you so much. And I'm very happy that you're happy. And Thank you very much. Um, it's amazing that you seeked out a therapist because lots of people don't and it's really hard work. And it's a continuous cycle, continuous work, Super. always learning, always learning. Every week. Every week, yeah. Um, I can say the same for myself. Okay. I saw someone in lockdown and it helped a lot. Yeah. And it helped a lot with creativity. Um, what, are the, what are some of the things that you learned about yourself talking to this person? I learned something very important that everything, mind can really create some ideas which are not true yeah. <laughs> yeah. which is something that stay in your mind yeah and uh, goes in circle if you don't talk mm. these circles makes issues and mm. makes uh, life more difficult than what it is you know mm -hmm. this is why i really believe that is super important to speak with a therapist yeah doesn't matter what you do I mean, it's super important to have somebody, some professionals to talk with. Yeah. Even if you do another job, doesn't have to be for force uh, artist or a DJ, but it's super important. I mean, it's nothing that I, I really scream this to everybody. It's really, <laughs> really important. Yeah. Something that uh, I will never have done before, but um, now I cannot live without this. And it's brought your creative side back. Yeah, exactly. Which you were missing and I imagine you were quite sad about because you weren't able to go into the studio and express yourself. I was not able. I was just going to the, into the studio and I was like, I get uh, anxiety mm. and a lot of thoughts about, okay, I have to do this because of this. No, no, it mm. doesn't work like that. It's also about how the world is right now, you know. It's like when you open Instagram or, you know, all the social medias and uh, these reels come out of people buying, you know, these kind of big watches yeah. and, and big cars and you want to be like them. Mm. In mind, same happens with music. Mm -hmm. When you open it and you just see these numbers and likes and that and that and that, it affects affects the mind. Mm. This also happening happened during the pandemic when many of us were uh, fragile. Mm -hmm. This is how, you know, world is, is different right now. Yeah. So we need to really see what are the values for us. And I have a lot to give yet with my passion. I don't want to do anything that is going against my feelings. Yeah. I love what I do. I really love music more than me. It's incredible. <laughs> It's insane. I cannot go and uh, make a track in the studio with somebody producing for me and not even looking at it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe I don't like it and I have to do it because it's going to be good for my profile. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I'm a DJ first. Producer second, mm -hmm. which it automatically gets first. <laughs> because it's it's because of productions that I've been able to start to, to travel mm -hmm. and then show to the people that I am a DJ first. Mm -hmm. So it goes everything together. Yeah. I don't need to be on the top 10 to play. My career is still there and I'm so grateful. And I thank everybody, all the people that really believe in this because it's... Uh, I, I don't have words to how grateful I am to to still see the people there, even in this special uh, moment of the scene, mm. this special uh, era of the music where everything is about numbers. Yeah. I don't do numbers on, on socials. I don't do numbers on Spotify. I wish, <laughs> but I, I didn't produce for a long time. Mm -hmm. And still, I have to thank the crowd, which is still there. It's incredible. This is why I still love music, like the, the first day. 
because of the crowd, because mm. of the loyal people that are, are still there. And I also thank the people that didn't trust me at the beginning, that they hated me at the beginning, because I really proved to myself that I'm stronger than anything. I really believe in what I do, and even against the hatings, and the people didn't trust me, I, I went forward. Mm. So I thank them. Mm. I'm happy that not everybody told me, oh, I like it. I would have been boring. Yeah. <laughs> if everybody tell you you're doing good, means that something is wrong. Yeah. So I prefer, of course, to have a bigger percentile of people that uh, agree. It would have been maybe wrong if I have the 80% of hatings. But anyway, I'm ready for that. <laughs> but um, I actually never really went to extreme on changes. Mm. I just opened my techno career to what are my house roots. Yeah. But techno and house always been there, you mm. know. I'm not talking about coming from techno to EDM, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So this is why... I believe that people with the time, it's uh, understanding mm. and agreeing on this, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you, you can hear your love and your passion yeah. about music. Let's talk about some of those early house records that made oh you fall God. in love with the, oh my God, yes. with the genre. I heard you speak about Master's work a little bit behind the scenes. <sighs> it's, a, it's a long discourse to say. So how I got connected with uh, dance music. So I was 11, it was uh, in, in 1998, and uh, there was, it was the era of Eurodance, you know, like there was the commercial music of mm -hmm. that time. I was working uh, close to my family house I was uh, getting back home from a football game mm -hmm. with friends. And uh, I passed the square of, of uh, my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And there were a group of people dancing. There was these, uh, there were like two uh, big speakers on the street and uh, this DJ service. I was like, what is that? You know, I mean... And I, it was like American people were living in front of my family house mm -hmm. because they were there, uh, th these families were there in mission with the U.S. Navy. Okay. So there was like a, a park where everybody was living. Yeah. And so I grew up with Americans. And they were doing, celebrating the Independence Day. Mm -hmm. It was the 4th of July, 1998. And I was like, listen, like, I never really list, heard dance music before. I was like, oh, I like that. <laughs> okay. I go to shower and went back with mm -hmm. my friends. It was like uh, early. It was like about 7, 8 in the evening. And uh, I saw the figure of the DJ for the first time. So I was like, what is he doing? You know, <laughs> this guy was playing vinyl. I said, oh, my grandma has the same, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. and I spoke with a guy, like, what, what is that? He's a DJ, man, you know, like, I was a, a kid, like, oh, but my grandma is the same, mm, but I don't think are the same. <laughs> These are the techniques, you know, with yeah. <laughs> pitch control. I said, what is that? So I went to my father's house uh, to speak with him and say, like, listen, dad, I want to I wanna be a DJ. We're like, what is this? You know, like, okay, I'm going to ask to a friend. Maybe he knows. He played piano. And this guy say, no, it's too expensive. You know, one technics cost like the crazy amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I'm gonna still do it. And uh, I saved money for a summer. This is a long story, really long story. <laughs> but that, that DJ on the square was playing commercial music, was playing Gigi D'Agostino, like uh, Prezioso, FL65, was that okay. era, you know? <laughs> yeah. And in that, so I wanted to hear this music, and uh, I asked to my dad to see where I could find this music. So he, he bought me um, a tape, a cassette mm -hmm. of uh, DJ Parade, which was like the radio DJ in Italy, 
which is a famous radio station. It was a DJ parade summer 98. So it was uh, mixed by Fargetta, which is an Italian uh, commercial DJ, very, very popular. And in this tape, I still remember the track list. There was one tune that was a more, more housey tune. It was a uh, Hollis P. Monroe. I'm lonely. Mm -hmm. That's like, I'm lonely. Dun, 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 I listened to it on the way here. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. So this is my really first approach with a house tune. Okay. And in that, in that summer, I was hungry of music. I wanted to listen more and more and more. I didn't have internet, mm -hmm. no CDs, only cassette, yeah. you know? And I didn't have money to buy original cassette, so I was going to, you know, to, <laughs> yeah. to record cassettes from friends. And my friends didn't really listen to this, so I was alone. I was looking for new friends. And there was a guy I will never forget. His name is Massimo. Uh, he was in a square, mm -hmm. in that famous square, uh, always hanging out with his friends. They were older than me, much older. I mean, like, he was already about 17, mm -hmm. 18, I was 11. And uh, one day I was listening, that they were with a high volume radio in the car, and it was like super good music. I said, what is this? This is good. This is music for my hairs. And so I went to ask, and this guy say, you are so young, how you can listen to this? You are 11. <laughs> say, please, please, can you tell me what is this? He was like, man, okay, but you, you don't understand this. You are too, too young. Please, this is Lil Louis Vega. Okay. First time I heard his name was by this guy. Mm. This is Louis Vega, Mazza's at work. I'm like, man, I was like, really like, something changed from that moment and this guy gave me this tape as a present say okay i give you take it i'm going i have a copy mm -hmm. i took this cassette it was louis vega recorded live in napoli in okay. a party from that moment everything changed mm -hmm. from that cassette there was no shazam there was not nothing so i want i was going to the local record, record shop mm -hmm. of my hometown Caserta, which is like 20 minutes from Napoli. And there was like a, just one, or maybe two record shop at that time. I didn't have money to buy records. I didn't have a uh, setup. I just uh, bought two records. With that two records, I played for like eight months after I got a setup. So it was, it's, it's a long story, but... Uh, I still remember the first record I bought was uh, Eddie Amador, House Music, mm -hmm. and uh, War A Sensation, from, uh, Masses at Work, mm -hmm. Ken Lowe. And I still think that that record, War A Sensation, is one of the most j incredible, you know, genius tracks mm -hmm. ever. So it's something that I still think. And uh, and yeah, yeah it's a, I would love to say so much things, but <laughs> <laughs> we should to have like hours and hours. But. Yeah. It sounds like um, throughout your life, people giving you music, your dad giving you the cassette and Maximo giving you the cassette have been really important really? for you to discover music. And I'm sure that's continued and up until now. I think sharing music is one of the most kind of magical things you can do with one other person that could literally change the course of. It is. Spending a word or uh, helping somebody, it's always something that maybe you are, you are really changing somebody's life, mm. you know? It's true. I totally agree with you. It's a... Uh, Without that that cassette, maybe I was not able to be here. Mm. Without that guy playing in the square in front of 20 people. <laughs> yeah. Without that guy explaining me what this guy was doing. Yeah. I was not able to, to understand that this was my destiny. Mm. So it's incredible, it's true. Yeah. Totally agree with you. Um, Louis Vega is one of my 
favourite producers. He's also one of the best people to have a conversation with. He is. Um, he is. He has so many stories and you le I learn so much from him every time that I speak to him. Um, I interviewed him some years ago now and then I threw a party at Fabric about eight years ago for my birthday. And I said, please, Louis, will you come and play? And he hadn't played at Fabric for, I think, about 10 years because he mostly played at Ministry. And I said to the guys at Fabric, we'll, we'll get this to work, we'll get this to work. And he came and played and I just stood in the booth for three hours and just watched in awe. And every time I see him play... It's like I'm a kid again, <laughs> almost like I'm excited. It's like the first time you go to a show or the first time you see a DJ that you love. Um, and he's so humble. He is. So humble. He's humble because he has a mission for mm. himself. Producing music, play music. That's it. He just, he's a son of music. So this is the difference between somebody who want to make music for numbers mm. and to to get trend and more trendy or somebody who really is a musician and really wants to leave something to the scene this is this is Louis Vega mm. this is something that it's uh, it's incredible how we have been doing this and how he still does this yeah he have been producing every day of his life, even when maybe the era was changing and mm. music is up and down, you know, we know how it is. It's the trendy goes, comes back. I still remember when I, st I start to listen to music, house music was everywhere. Mm. Techno music was super underground. Mm. Then techno music become huge Dutch music was getting more underground mm. and now the things nowadays everything is seems to be in the in their own position mm -hmm. but i remember how louis vega never stopped to produce one day of his life he never thought about okay i have to change because maybe nowadays is something is too music is too heavy than before mm -hmm. so i have no he was doing live band yeah 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 Something else. Yeah. He was doing a salsa. Mm. This is an artist. Mm. This is a maestro, you know. This is how Louis Vega inspires me. Mm. And as a DJ, I cannot believe after so many years, when he's on the stage, he still enjoy every second. Yeah. Can be in front of a thousand people, can be in front of a 50 people, can be in front of a camera, mm. doing a streaming, or anywhere. Mm. And when we, when we really connected, it was about six, seven years ago. I, will, I still uh, get emotional when I see him, but now we are really close, mm -hmm. we're really like friends. Mm -hmm. It's family for me, really. Louis Vega family is like uh, really another family for me. And when we decide to do something special in New York, I will never forget, we spoke and uh, Louis told me about doing a back-to-back -back on vinyl mm. in his hometown. In Be New nervous. York. Yeah, we did <laughs> six hours set back-to-back wow. -back yeah. only on vinyl. Yeah. So I will never forget. We did two times this, eh? uh -huh. two times at Cielo this legendary club that now closed. I will never forget the feeling. Mm. I bring all my favorite house music records of that era, of uh, from 98 to more, you know? And uh, I was playing some records that I remember I was hearing in the Louis Vega tapes of 98. Yeah. <laughs> and when he heard that records played for, by me, he was like, oh, I know these. I said, yeah, Louis, <laughs> you were playing these in 98. Yeah. Yeah, this is true, you know. <laughs> and like, so it was like, oh, you know, like, I am remembering him, music yeah. that he was playing, and it, it aff affected my life forever, you know. Yeah. It's incredible. And uh, I will never forget a, um, a comment by a... A, a big fan of mine, he's a techno fan, mm. 
But when he saw this flyer, Louis Vega back to back Joseph Capriari in New York, in Manhattan, he came to mm. see like, how possible that Joseph is gonna play with Louis Vega? Only vinyl, like, I wanna go. Yeah. So the room was completely packed and there was like half of my people that were like being there to see, let's see what they're doing. Mm. I will never forget the, the comments about my loyal fans. There was one in particular, long like this, you know, on, on Instagram or Facebook, something like this. You're like, I would, I, we never saw you like this. Mm. You never looked more happy than this. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw the videos the day after, I really looked happy. Mm. But it was a different type of happiness. It was like coming, really coming from the heart, something mm. I have in the veins, mm. because this is how I started. Like child. And I was there playing with my, yeah. uh, my idol. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I cannot explain the feeling really, it's yeah. incredible, but it's insane. And he also put like the rotary mixer. Mm. So like all the, the real DJ figure that I know from the beginning, the, the rotary house music mixer mm. with the isolator. So I was doing like you know, these tricks with the <laughs> three bands isolator. I tried to, to emulate Louis, you know, yeah. it's impossible. But yeah. you know, and they were like, yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> I was like, you know, it was so much fun. Yeah. That's, that's something I will never forget. This is, uh, and he was there supportive. Yeah. Like, yeah, man, you're playing violin in New York. <laughs> And the uh, other DJs came. I remember it was Danny Krivit came to listen. Uh, Angel Morris, we, who died, mm. you know, the angel were there. Uh, David Morales came. Yeah. Uh, maybe his son, something. Yeah, but anyway, it was like New York, you know. Yeah. House music scene in New York supporting that night. Mm. It was incredible. Did you get to share his headphone? His one headphone. We did. Yeah. Exactly. Amazing. <laughs> exactly. We did. I was yeah. playing with the proper house music yeah. setup. Yeah. And how I know the DJ house music figure. You know? Yeah. That must have felt um, quite unreal. No, uh, unreal. Yeah. Totally. Like a dream. <laughs> a dream. Yeah. A dream. For me, it's something that he, uh, also also was funny. It's about. We've been to New to Tokyo together. Mm. He was playing in uh, Ageha, and I was playing in uh, Womb. But we met each other uh, same time. Mm. We were in the same weekend there. So it was a uh, Louis and Kenny Dope. We went to record shop together, and there is a photo that I post on Instagram, which for me is something iconic from me. Mm -hmm. Me in the middle of masses at work, listen, taking records in the hand. <laughs> there was a, a friend of us took the picture. And th that weekend, Lou introduced me a, um, a nerd, which is a proper nerd of, uh, you know, DJ technology and uh, turntables, custom turntables. And he gave me um, um, a shell mm -hmm. to listen the records, which has uh, something special inside, which you can hear the vinyl. It's like playing a vinyl with a mastering. Mm. The volume is like better than a CDJ. Okay. It's incredible. So this is the gift of this guy. Mm -hmm. So I bring these shells to New York during our, <laughs> our set. And Louis like, Wow, this is the present uh, this guy gave to you. You say, yeah. yeah, Louis, because of you. Yeah. So, and uh, I saw these shells were like super expensive, super expensive. And this guy gave me for free because I was with Louis Vega. Amazing. Incredibly incredible. Like, so I played that and it was like, Louis, oh, thank you for bringing them. Yeah. You know, it's so, incredible. It's incredible. So you have, you've made a lot of music recently. Yes. Yes. Um, you said that it might be a little bit unexpected. Yeah. For some of your fans, but you seem extremely excited about it. Yeah. And I'm excited for you. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. Um, what's what's next for you? How does the future feel for you? <sighs> what's next for me? I don't know, to be honest. I'm not sure about tomorrow. Mm. I don't want to make too much plans. Mm -hmm. 
I don't want to be here saying, okay, I have this project, I have this other project. At the end, you never know how things are going to go in life. And I'm ready to any, any anything. I will not be surprised if something doesn't go how I expect, to be honest. I'm not here to promote myself. I'm just here to have a conversation with you and to share the house music, the love I have for house music. I love house music with all my heart. And uh, in terms of projects, yeah, you know, I have Ibiza, I have this metamorphosis project, which is uh, trying to be a party experience. Mm. I wanted that people comes to, to these parties are gonna have a special memory. Mm. And uh, I don't know how, how, how it's gonna be the future, to be honest, I, I just know that I'm here stronger than before mm. and uh, that I love much more what I do. It's like really uh, like being back to my beginnings. It's yeah. it's incredible when you when you when you think that life is hard to you and uh, yeah, it's kind of difficult. But um, when you think that life is hard to you, then uh, life gives you surprise. You know, mm. and that's it. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. It's, uh, yeah. It's been um, a journey, a really long journey for you. Emotional. Yeah, Thank you for sharing. Emotional, very emotional. Very strong and uh, very heavy in yeah. a way, but uh, I'm stronger than before. And yeah. it feels like um, being in that place of you don't know what comes next. Yeah that you are happy within yourself. I'm happy right now. Feels like the best possible position to be in right now. I don't want to make plans anymore. Yeah. It's the, what I've learned also in this uh, difficult time of my life, which is, uh, it's in, impossible to know how it's going to be next. We do a lot of expectation mm -hmm. in our minds, mm -hmm. you know, especially when you are, uh, you know that you can do good. Mm. In yourself, you can you know that you have a lot of capacities, and you look at the others and you start to say, "Yeah, I can do the same," but you don't have to do what other does. Mm. You have to to make the difference first to yourself. If you make difference to yourself and you know you are special, that's why you are doing good. Mm. You have to know by yourself that you are special. Mm -hmm. Don't let anybody go put you down or your mind to put you down because mind makes a lot of tricks, a lot of jokes every day. Mm. And this is what society became. It's, a, it's heavy for the mind. Mm. So we need, to, we need to know what is very important to us. And if we are really good to do that, Otherwise, we have to be stay true, mm. you know, especially in terms of music, you know. Music is something that it's a, it's a language. It's something that you, you cannot really learn. It's something that you, you born with. If you have the musical gift or the expression gift with music, it's something that you cannot really learn. You can improve. Mm -hmm. But you you born with with it, and one day you will discover that you have this gift. The most important thing is that you have to feed that gift with the uh, real vibes, mm. with the uh, real real emotions. Mm. You know, if you don't feel anymore the emotions, in a way, you are using the mind, mm. and the mind. It's not good for this. Yeah, you you spoke about there that it, you must you must um, concentrate on what's important to you and not what's going out on externally. What what is important to you now? It's important to see what is happening. Yeah, because it's also inspiring. Yeah, it inspired me a lot. Yeah, I loved to see the change. I have to say, maybe the change nowadays is too fast. Yeah, because I remember before. 
the wave, the new wave of music were, was changing after four or five years. Yeah. Now it's like every year. <laughs> it's, dif it's more difficult. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, hard to prove. It's hard to keep up. Yeah. So it's yeah. a different way. But I think that to your point about people like Louis, people like Carl, they don't try to keep up. They see what's happening, but they always seem to do, make sure what they're doing is on course with themselves. This is why I'm still here. Yeah. And this is why I told you before about Carl, mm. about Louis, mm. about Francois K, about Danny Tanaya, all these people. These are my biggest influence and this will stay my biggest influence. Mm. New generation is inspiring me a lot, mm. incredible but nobody can inspire me like these people. Mm. Because these people have been true to themselves and to the crowd every single day of their life. And still, they are there. It's not about because I'm older than the new generation. No, it's not about that. It's the way that they have done things for me is what really made me as an artist. Mm. And the new generation, it's inspiring me a lot. Yeah. In a different way. Yeah. But if I have to, to see the difference between this artist and the new artist, there is a difference in terms of knowledge yep. about music mm. different way of seeing music and different way of approach on music which is n nothing is better than the other i it's me mm -hmm. my personal vision mm. but um i also really love what is happening nowadays there is a lot of incredible huge talents and uh, maybe you know uh, this these people will be the next Louis Vega, the next mm. Carl Cox, mm. in a different way. Yeah. But you know, this is uh, my my vision of what are my roots, and uh, I'm I'm grateful that I've been able to live this uh, change of era before the really old school and the new school, which is my school. Mm. Then there is the new school again, which is. <laughs> different than yeah. what I, I, uh, I have experienced it. But that era of being on the dance floor with no phones, mm -hmm. no cameras, I was bringing my camera, a film camera, and uh, I have, I'm so grateful I did. It was not easy because when I was going to, to dance, I was 16, my first, I, my first party I attended as a clubber Big party was I was 16 or 15, 15, sorry. It was uh, my first DJ ever that I have heard was Tony Embris in Napoli. And uh, the second one was Francois K. And uh, I was, uh, I didn't have money. I was collecting money from my mom, my gran grandmother, my grandfather, like uh, the amount of uh, five euros each. And I was able to buy the ticket and mm -hmm. then I had to tell to my mom that I was going to sleep to friend's house <laughs> because these parties I was attending were like really, you know, hardcore. Yeah. It's a lot of people, mm -hmm. like uh, 10,000 people, me like, you know, 15 years old alone. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, getting uh, help from older people to get to Napoli mm -hmm. in their car. Yeah. So they were taking me and I was going only with the quiet people, no crazy people. You know? <laughs> I was scared. Yeah. So um, I have to thank also these people that they were taking me to Napoli and taking responsibility on me and helping me to listen to these DJs. And um, so um, I have to really thank this era, these mm. moments. And I thank myself that I was bringing this camera in my pocket, it was like big, like this. But I, now I have memories that they are printed, they are home. Yeah. And I sometimes I go to my family house, my parents' house, 
and I look these pictures and I can see the dance floor different. Mm. People were just having a good time. Nobody was with anything in the hands. Yeah. So I'm grateful that I lived this era because mm. um, it really stays in myself forever. Yeah. And I, I have, I also love the new generation, the new vibe. It really also made me evolve. I love it. But this era is something that I don't think is going to ever come back. No, never, I think it's never. the last. Absolutely last not. Time. Absolutely yeah. not. For me nowadays, maybe there are a really few realities that keeps this kind of level, maybe mm -hmm. are four or five plays in the world. Mm -hmm. They have the no phone policy. Mm -hmm. They have to be like, they're making restrictions, Strict, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you have to feel like, oh, I cannot get in, you know, because mm. I'm not ready. This is not, not good mm. because to keep something too real, you have to also not allow people to get in, which maybe it's, maybe you are, not letting in somebody that really loves music mm. and maybe because he's not dressed as you want you cannot you cannot these people uh, you you don't allow these people in mm. this is i don't think it's right yeah i mean but i think it's you know this kind of uh, necessity to keep this uh, very underground way uh, you know, it's it's nothing that will change the scene. You know, the scene of before will never come back. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. You know? So I just made peace with myself. Yeah. This will never come back. But you lived it. You I experienced lived it. it. And I'm I love to live also the yeah. new scene. Yeah. In uh, my vision. Yeah. I love it. You know, it's uh, inspiring. Yeah. I have a lot of new friends as artists you know we collaborate a lot we speak you know we talk and they inspire me a lot it costed me a little to understand few things mm -hmm. but then you know it's uh, until i like the vibrations that this music give to me i really love to collaborate with people and share the stage and uh, go to listen to new artists it's amazing. Otherwise, it's like, you know, this kind of dinosaurus, you know, like, <laughs> oh, I have lived the old scene, so uh, I cannot like the new generation. Yeah. No, this is wrong. Yeah. And I see a lot of uh, artists does this. Mm -hmm. It's very wrong by my, my point of vision. Yeah. You know, I respect the point of view, but the new generation is amazing. It's yeah. incredible. There are so many great artists, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Well, I know that you um, are not making any grand plans for the future, yeah. but um, I'm excited to see what happens. There's something I'm very, very happy that yeah. is happening and I want to share that we are starting a proper collaboration with the Defected Records. Yeah, I didn't want to say anything. I'll let you say it. <laughs> so this is something that I want to uh, spoiler right now. Yeah. And... Uh, be ready for uh, some craziness. I really <laughs> want to give all my best on these uh, records and remixes and anything is going to happen. Yeah. Really, I'm excited. Good. Um, thank you so much for coming on and sharing and being so honest and vulnerable. This is why I've done. Yeah. Because I needed to do something real, you know? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not doing a lot of interviews since long, since long time. I don't do a proper interview. I was not even able to look myself in the camera for a period. I was. I did just. I just didn't want. Mm. I. I didn't. I was not comfortable to look myself in a camera. I didn't do any streaming for long, long time. Mm -hmm. I was like just. I don't know. Worried about comments. I was just very vulnerable. Mm. But uh, yeah, as I told you before, life is a journey. So now I'm back. I'm here sitting, telling you this. Moments in Music. Moments in music.